Hello, this would be our discussion for uh, our next module for management accounting, which is basic cost management co concepts. So this would be module six of our management accounting and control uh, course. So now we go to the basic of cost. What is cost? So as mentioned here, it is the value foregone or sacrifice of resources for the purpose of achieving some economic benefits which will promote the profit-making ability of the firm. So this is the resources that you let go in exchange of your firm to have uh, to have continued operations or to be uh, to to be able to operate or to earn profit as a result of your uh, of your of your day-to-day -day, uh, works or business so uh, cost is necessary for you to generate profit so in order for your business to operate you need to forego some resources as a result of uh, getting them back at a higher return so that is the concept of cost so everything everything that you that you wish to get or to achieve would have some cost or some resources to be foregone for example if you work if you if you want to earn money you need to uh, invest labor effort time so that is the cost of you uh, of you having to having to earn money for yourself so a cost is used when a resource is used for some purpose it is also an outlay or expenditure of money to acquire goods and services that assist in performing operations so when we incur cost cost is not necessarily cash per se uh, we also have uh, other costs uh, that we incur like uh, resources as mentioned uh, time uh, space those are all costs uh, for us to uh, to pursue or to continue uh, our day-to-day -day operations. What is a cost pool? So uh, costs are expenditures or outlays are there. Now we need to group them into meaningful groups that would enable us to identify those costs uh, in in whatever uh, whatever profit or resources they would be generating as a result of them being incurred so we need to pull them together so that uh, so that we can interpret them and use them in our analysis so costs may be classified according to the type of cost uh, according to the source from where the cost was incurred so the type of cost we will we will mention a number of types of costs later on source uh, this means from which department it came from that would be useful in our analysis because uh, if the cost came from department a department b or department c whichever whichever department that is we will be able to determine the, the department that incurs most of the cost by responsibility meaning by by the management or by by some some manager that is uh, that is in charge of controlling that expenditure or if it is from the staff or if it is something that is outside the control of those people now when we say cost object this is the item with which uh, we which with which the cost is pertaining to so this is the product service organizational unit to which costs are assigned for some management purpose. So it is the it is the reason why we incurred that cost. So for example, mm, the the raw materials for a product are the wh what is the cost object there? The product. So we incurred raw materials so that we can produce the product. So that is cost object. Products and services are generally cost objectives. Any item to which cost can be traced and that has a key role in management strategy can be considered as cost object. For example, um, the machine can be a cost object. Uh, 
depending on uh, depending on the purpose for example uh, if the repairs and maintenance per machine we can we can identify each machine as a cost object cost driver this is the activity that causes uh, any increase or decrease in uh, the level of total cost so when the when the activity when this activity is uh, is changing the uh, the total cost also changes so this might be this this might have an inverse or direct relationship on the cost depending on the type of cost that there is later on we will identify different types of costs and how they are affected by these cost drivers so the cost driver uh, has the effect of uh, changing or changing the value of the total cost as a result of a change in value in the cost driver as well what are these cost drivers activities for example uh, units of products produced so that is a cost driver a number of hours incurred in in the production line would also be a cost driver uh, that would be a cost driver for labor machine hours that is a cost driver as well now we go to cost assignment what is cost assignment cost assignment is the process of assigning cost to cost pools or from cost pools to cost objectives so what is the difference of cost assignment to cost allocation that is the type of cost that there is you will assign costs to uh, to cost poles or cost objectives or cost objects to which they directly pertain to while cost allocation is the spreading out of a cost that is not directly identifiable to a cost object or cost pool so that it can be spread across the entire organization so that each chunk of the organization has a portion of that cost that can be attributed to them uh, what are the example of this uh, electricity cannot be directly allocated there is a certain portion of electricity that cannot be uh, electric costs that cannot be directly allocated the the fixed components now how do we how do we solve that if we are to distribute that cost we allocate them per 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 department that can be done how do we know how do we identify the cost to be allocated per department we can do it uh, by by determining the number of hours that department is open because generally by the number of hours they are open uh, they would have a certain amount uh, they that would uh, in one way or the other affect the change in the electric cost later on we will identify what type of cost is electricity uh, electric costs electric charges if whether it is it it is an indirect one or a direct one or it is a mix of such allocation basis uh, this would be the cost drivers remember cost drivers uh, causes the decrease or increase the, a change in the in the total costs um, it can be cost uh, the al allocation the cost driver can be used as an allocation base for an item that cannot be specifically identified to one department but causes the increase or decrease of the uh, of the cost which is intended to be allocated uh, but cannot be directly identifiable to one of the departments or as the portion of the total amount cannot be uh, spread out cannot be assigned to one department or to a number of departments cost classifications we have different types of classification different types of costs so according to these items so nature or management function timing financial statement classification cost behavior inventory cost objective managerial influence uh, planning and control purposes time frame time period and for others and analytical purposes we go first to to the classification according to management functions we have manufacturing costs which are costs that are attributable to the production of goods 
So as a residual of this, if the cost is not attributable to the production of goods, it is a non-manufacturing cost. So all items that are not pertaining to the manufacture of the goods are non-manufacturing costs. What are manufacturing costs? These are further classified. It may be direct material. When, dire when it is a direct material, it is the raw materials that is put into process so that the product can to have a resulting product. So the items that can be directly identified in the production of the unit that is produced. Direct labor would be the labor hours directly attributable to the production of the item. So this can be traceable directly to the production of the item. That is the difference be because there would be indirect materials and indirect labor. So manufacturing overhead, any item that does not belong to direct materials or direct labor. That may be, uh, that may be supervision costs, any other any other component of manufacturing costs so we have the direct uh, we have major classification of manufacturing overhead we have indirect materials which are material supplies uh, that are used in manufacturing but do not become part of the end product what are examples of this direct materials for example you are producing a table the direct materials there would be at some extent the wood but uh, what can be an indirect material there can be supplies. Uh, sandpaper. You would use sandpaper to sand the wood so that it would be smooth. But it will not form part of the end product. At some extent, varnish, paint brushes as well are materials that are used for the production of the table. But they cannot be directly attributable. They cannot be directly identifiable in the uh, in the in the finished product lacquer as well uh, the a, a component of the paint at some extent indirect labor this would be this would be supervision costs these are these are items that cannot be specifically attributed to the product but are costs that are incurred uh, to the manufacturer of the product because uh, quality quality control supervision cannot be uh, cannot be specifically clocked in to one product like uh, you would only spend 10 minutes of quality quality control for the specific product unlike direct labor you can count the hours that are needed to 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 sculpt the table to cut to form it to finish it now non-manufacturing costs are composed of marketing costs these are costs that we incur uh, to to sell the product we have general and administrative costs so accounting costs uh, warehousing costs any cost that is uh, that is related to uh, to the day-to-day -day operation of the business that are not directly attributable to the production of the item. Now we go to cost classification according to timing of rec recognition as expense. We have product costs. When we say that an item is a product cost, uh, the timing of recognition uh, as expense of this item would be, uh, would be directly attributable to when the product uh, exits the company so for example how when would when would you recognize this at as an expense when the item is sold so what are the example of this uh, these are also called inventoriable costs why because while they are still not sold uh, un manufacturing costs that are uh, of the product that are still not sold they would form part of inventory because, for example, you produce uh, 100 units and you incurred 100 pesos to produce those 100 units and only 50 units were sold. So, 50 pesos of that 100 pesos would pertain to cost of goods sold. And the other 50 pesos would pertain to, would pertain to uh, your ending inventory balance. That is different from period costs. 
because when we say that a uh, cost is a period cost, it would be expensed at the time when it is incurred. What is the example of this? Um, of course, uh, in general, these are these are non-manufacturing costs. Like uh, if you if you have an if you have uh, the salary of the salespeople, you will incur you will incur them this month. You will pay them this month. You will recognize that that as an expense this month because it is not capitalizable as part of the product. So those items which can be uh, capitalized as part of the product are called product costs and they are expensed when the item is sold or when the item when the product unit exits the company so period costs are expensed when they are incurred that is the difference on them on the timing of recognition as an expense